Uh, what up, Freeholder fam? It's been a minute. Uh, this is Chris Crooks, the CEO of Rogueware, uh, lead designer, basically the only coder, composer, supporting artist, blah, 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 for Freeholder, uh, and also uh, a new father. And uh, just generally coming up on the end of uh, my 33rd year here, which has been crazy. So, uh, you know, I have not managed to get as much done on the game as I would like, but uh, I'm triply excited to get this game ready for y'all and uh, uh, get some new features going. But I have to get a lot of the old stuff cleaned up. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you for the, se the uh, seventh alpha here is the uh, new battle system. And some of the stuff that came with it that includes uh, removing a lot of the old micromanagement for battles, which I think made them uh, not very much fun and uh, less accessible and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, who wants to keep swapping out armor and, you know, winter gear all the time? So this is my uh, first attempt to address that directly. Uh, so uh, let me just get into it here. It's just going to be mostly explanations uh, about what's different, uh, what's improved, in my opinion, and then... Uh, We'll just move towards uh, a quick demo of the battle system. I mean, obviously, you're going to find these things out for yourself. That's why you have the game. So, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to take a warrior, obviously, since we're going to be doing some fighting. Uh, let's take tough. I'm just playing survival mode. <clears throat> so, uh, basically, in the old days, we had uh, just equipment. And with equipment, you know, you just had these slots. Uh, you had, like, a cloak and clothing and uh, hands, which were for two things, of the, you know, one thing for each hand, or that is to say one thing in both hands. And it's just, it's kind of confusing. I mean, I don't know. I'll, 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 one of the things I want to make clearer is uh, how equipment works. It's in one of the things that's on the list. But uh, one thing that you used to have to do is continually swap out, if you wanted to go fight, like leather armor for your winter gear and or your cloak and, you know, a weapon for your, your, your whatever, walking stick. It doesn't matter. So, so uh, it made battle less appealing because every time you wanted to go to battle, you had to swap out your gear. So now I've isolated all the battle stuff in the battle mode, and you only equip it there. You don't have to deal with it outside, and you just keep all of your equipment profiles for domestic work the way they were. You don't have to swap back and forth, back and forth, which, of course, is very irritating and serves no useful purpose. Uh, so uh, basically now we have equipment, which is what people wear out here, and then battle gear, which is what people use up inside the battle. Uh, and uh, I'll just get into a battle here, and I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if we can get any mercs really quick before we go do something. Ah, good. A goodly selection. Uh, Alright. And, uh, I don't know, is there a village? Yeah, let's just assault the village. Okay. Just sort of get my people set up here. Okay, so uh, basically you'll see here, uh, well, uh, that in addition to the old sort of icons, you also have these names under it. And you'll notice that for each of the mercs, they just have the name of their merc type. And that's because uh, their equipment is set, their equipment profile is set to their merc type. But for you, you can change it. So if you click, it brings up the profile for, your, uh, for that particular character. And of course, it's empty right now. And I've added a, a lot of different weapons here. So you can uh, sort of see, you know, so I can show you some of the different things about this. Uh, we have here just a variety of different melee weapons. Uh, let's see here. Short sword. I have a quiver here that I can show you, but I'll get to that in a second. So, um, hmm. It's just going to be kind of irritating for people to hear the music. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna turn down the music. Okay, <clears throat> that should be better. I don't want people to be distracted by the battle music while I'm trying to do this explanation. Uh, okay, so uh, what kinds of battle gear can you equip? In the old days, they were the same as your equipment. It's no longer the case. So basically, you have. Uh, oh. Well, what's gone, okay? What's gone is clothing. No more clothing in battle. Most of the time it was useless. Like occasionally you could swap in some like armor clothing. So there was like one type of clothing that you could wear in battle. So what was the point? None, it's gone. Uh, and now of course you could wear cloaks 
Or you could wear armor, and that's dumb, because cloaks and armor are both wearable at the same time. So instead of clothing now, you wear cloaks, and armor is its own thing. It has its own slot that is only applicable in battle. Makes sense, right? Why would you wear armor outside of battle? Uh, and then also you have one accessory, uh, not two accessories. Let's just, you know, keep things, keep it easy here. And then uh, one use item, or use item. <laughs> Consumable might be better. At, I'm not committed to use item. It's a little bit on the nose. <clears throat> but, you know, at least it's clear, hopefully. Um, so, basically, also, you can't see it here. There's, like, a space. But for advanced warrior classes, like the Myrmidon, who can dual wield, or the Gladiator, who can wield a, a shield and two weapons, which is to say they can switch between two weapons and have a shield, even if it's two-handed, or one of them, or both are two-handed, uh, there's an extra slot here. But that's not going to be applicable right now. Uh, and so all, you, all that has to be worried about on the sort of weapon section here is the main weapon. Uh, the shield, the shield or alternate weapon, and then your quiver or throwing weapon here. <clears throat> so let's just take a main weapon, for example. I'm going to take a falcata. Okay, and then let's do an alternate weapon, just so I can explain that mechanic. A war mace or a great axe. Okay, so uh, basically now you have a main weapon and you have an alternate weapon. And uh, practically speaking, that means that you can attack with either one, but also now you can choose which one you want to react with. So, you know, you could hit somebody with your Fulcata, but keep the Great Axe in reserve to swipe at people when they actually come up to you in melee. So you have a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, also, you could pick out a reach weapon uh, for defense, but use like a sort of close range heavy hitting weapon for offense. It gives you a little bit more uh, tactical flexibility. Uh, and then in situations where, for example, you have a, a bow or some other sort of like ranged weapon in your main slot, the alt weapon will still allow you to have a melee weapon for reacting in melee, which is extremely useful because otherwise your archer will just sit there and get slammed. Um, also, thanks to this mechanic uh, and some tweaks, it means that archers are not uh, the sitting ducks that they once were. Uh, when you run up to them and attack them in melee, they'll get at you with their daggers. Uh, there aren't any archers that are defenseless in melee anymore. Uh, now, so if you're uh, not one of these specialty classes, uh, even if you're a regular warrior, basically you have to choose between whether you want to have a shield for extra defense at the cost of having that uh, alternate weapon uh, or the alternate weapon. And keep in mind, too, like tactically speaking, you could have two different types of, of weapon damage. So like the Falcatus slashing damage, uh, although it does have like some axe-like properties, and the long spear is uh, piercing damage. So you might keep the Falcata around for dealing with like light, light, lightly armed uh, frontline types uh, whereas heavily armors, you might want to deploy the long spear, or if you want to get to the back row, for example. Although, actually, I don't think the long spear lets you do that. I think you need the pike, which I, I, <laughs> I have to look into that. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go with the shield for now. And then uh, the last sort of interesting thing is the quiver throwing weapon section. So in the old days, you had to like make throwing weapon sets, and you know it would consolidate them, but it was all very clunky and dumb. So now you crank out javelins uh, from... Uh, the from the smithy, the fabrica, like always, but then they just kind of go into a general, you know, supply. And then when you go into battle and you want to equip uh, a throwing weapon, it just looks into your supply. So in this case, I have some javelins, some throwing knives, and some pylons, uh, all sitting in storage. And the first number is what's in the stack that I would take, and the right is the maximum. So in case I'm running under like the maximum stack that's takeable, it lets me know that I'm taking it like three of five, two of five. Uh, in this case, I have full stacks of all of them. And so if I was to take the javelins, we would just take five off the top of the stack. And other characters, you know, they could also take javelins. And then if you take it off, it just dumps them back in. It's all very straightforward. Uh, that includes throwing knives, pylons, throwing axes, uh, darts, other stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> and then the other complication is the quiver. And uh, it's not going to be relevant because I'm not using a bow with this, but i got to show you the interface. So if you take a quiver, uh, it brings up, and in this case, it's a lever, leather quiver, which can equip two different types of arrows up to 18. So, like, for example, I have all these in my stocks, and it's like, okay, let's say I want to do, like, five razor tips and five bodkins. And now, obviously, I can't do broadheads because I can only do types. So I'll just, like, load up on bodkins and razor tips here and confirm the loadout. So now it takes that quiver. Uh, and then that's the loadout that I'd bring into combat. Or if I empty it, I'll just dump those arrows back in and I'm good to go. Uh, I'm just going to take throwing knives, I guess. Or, or no, I'll take some pilums. Okay, <clears throat> so that's sort of the, the weapon section. And so to be maximally effective, whenever you bring somebody, you'd want to bring you know at least 
a main weapon and a shield or a main weapon and an alternate if it's like tactically useful plus some kind of throwing weapon and then you'll have some options and it's for like the second sort of defensive section although the used item doesn't really count as is either one it's very flexible is the cloak and the armor and the accessory so in this case i don't have that many cloaks right now uh, there's the camouflage cloak for stealth which i'm not going to bother with just at the moment so uh, we have the great cloak here and so the cloak is like an over layer <clears throat> It adds a little bit to like your armor properties, like um, you know, slashing resistance a little bit, a little bit of evade makes you harder to hit, uh, but generally doesn't add toughness unless it's like magical or a special kind of cloak. Uh, the battle cape, which I'm going to add soon, like the upgraded gray cloak, I think will probably add toughness. It might not. It might not because there's a, a special magical cloak that does. Um, <clears throat> so the cloak is like an extra layer, and you'll just want to bring them for the little edge that it gives you. Um, and then as for Hang on. As for the armor, you know, it's mostly about adding toughness and then resistance to specific weapon types. So, uh, you know, some things are very resistant to, you know, leather armor's got pretty good slashing resistance, uh, a little bit of bludgeoning resistance, but not so good for piercing or hacking, for example. Whereas, you know, metal armors tend to be a little bit more balanced. Uh, and the heavier ones still tend to not have very good piercing resistance. So, you know, it's sort of a tactical choice, but at the start, you're very limited by the fact that you only have access to some weak armors. Uh, you know, you, later on, you can get them different ways. You can loot them from people or you can upgrade your smithy or whatever. So uh, I'm just going to take chain mail because why not? I can. Not technically even available right now, I should point out. Uh, it's made of iron. Can't get iron. It's on the list. So uh, yeah, you might, I don't think you can get it from enemies right now. It's dev only. <laughs> uh, although, actually, some enemies have it, unfortunately for y'all. Okay, so the accessory is basically like a special item that adds an effect or does something. Uh, there's not that many battle accessories right now because I, I hadn't conceived them separately. And then also, it's worth pointing out that there are going to be some accessories that are technically equipment that have you know domestic effects. But then also, when you go into battle, will become available for bringing along as a battle accessory, like the loop lantern, for example which in battle adds like to your uh, detection abilities for stealth enemies, which I which don't exist yet. Um, so it's just there for fun. As for weak poison, it just adds a, uh, one level of poison to your attacks, which is handy. Um, I'm gonna take the poison. And then uh, the new feature, which I've mean, been meaning to add for a very long time is the use item. It's a consumable. In this case, these are the four that are available, although two of them are only available as pickups from enemies. Um, I might as well explain them right now. There's the smoke bomb, which you can use on an ally to stealth them. It doesn't matter if they stealth or not. It's very handy for getting a sneak attack or protecting a weak character or something. Uh, Greek fire does like an attack on a whole uh, row. I guess what it would be like, I call it a row, but I think it would be a rank technically. Um, a front and back set of enemies are hit by a fire attack that can cause burning, which is like more damage over time. Uh, Special Mead is a berserker, uh, uh, makes you go berserk, gives you like extra attack, extra critical, but then you get exhausted afterwards. The gold berserkers can use this to go berserk. And then uh, the healing drought that Cape Monty Alchemist has, it gives a small amount of healing, obviously extremely useful. Uh, I'm going to take the healing drought, actually. Okay, so that's, uh, so you can see here, like, it's a pretty involved, you have sort of like two straight defense, like one sort of option item, like two option items. And then, um, you know, your main weapon, alternates, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and so now what's great is that once you have your guy the way you like it, you can save the profile. So this will just be like, uh, I don't know, battler or something, right? So now I have that there. And anytime I come back, I can click that and it'll just load these things up, assuming that they're in the inventory. And if they're not, it'll just leave it empty. Uh, so that's very handy. So every time you come back to battle, you just click battler, return to battle, see, and you're good to go. Uh, okay, so let me just see what else I have to cover here. Uh, just so you know, uh, some planned features that are not quite in here yet. I, when you mouse over the, the gear in the profile screen there, there's no descriptions. I want to do that. Uh, and then also, there's no way to check your armory contents not in battle, which is pretty inconvenient. So along with uh, being able to check like your tools and your equipment and other stuff, I want you to be able to check the contents of your armory, obviously. And then also there's the... Um, the, what, the equipment sprites are not in right now, it's just text, uh, which will make the whole thing nicer, but I've been focusing on the fundamentals, which I'm sure you can appreciate, uh, is good. So, uh, let's see what else. Throwing weapons, use items, saving, loading custom profiles. 
Equipment based GUI. Yeah, that's up next. And I explained the use items, so uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so now you can see um, you can mouse over enemies and you get a look at their equipment profile. Uh, and then when your turn is up, you have the equipment profile of the current character here. And you can see here, uh, this reaction weapon choice is set to dagger because you can't use a melee weapon for reaction, so it just defaults to that. Uh, not that anybody can attack him in melee right now. Uh, he's got a great cloak, he's got a lantern, some armor, uh, and then you can change position here. So now the, the, the reason that I changed from the, the old menu is it's contextual now. Like you don't have to switch between all your different weapons. You just click the weapon that you want to use, and then it will give you a list of the things you want. So you left click, and now like you can snipe, or you can use range strike, or you use dagger, and you can choose, in this case, counter flank or guard stance, because he's not up in the front row. Um, you know, if you have a use item, you can click there, and it will bring up that action. Like it's much more simple. And then you can see, like, if for some reason you have like a magical cloak that has uh, an, an action associated with you, you just click it there. Like it's it's much more intuitive this way, and it doesn't use up a lot of space. You can see here, it's it's a um, it's rudimentary, but it shows you a, a a readout of all the properties of the different things that you have, which is handy. So uh, I'm just gonna take a shot at like. Uh, one of these guys, and you can see I have nine of each of these arrows, and this guy's quiver, and I can just pick either one. So I'm going to take a broadhead arrow and just take a shot at that guy. Wow, sweet. Okay, <clears throat> and then I took a shield for this guy, uh, so which is me. I have poison, I have the healing drought, so I could use this, but I won't because nobody is hurt. So uh, I'm just going to take uh, my Falcata and take a smack at one of these guys. Nope, no good. Uh, all right, he missed me. He missed there. All right. Take a strike at him. Nope, no good. Hmm. These militia aren't very good. I mean, they're not really supposed to be, but they're still not very good. Um, let's hit him. Flank him. Yeah. Well, this town ain't no thang. Ooh, nice shot. Uh, let's see if there's anything else on the old list here. Oh, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have anybody with an alternate weapon because I forgot. But uh, if you right-click, uh, if you have two weapons available that are um, that are possible reaction weapons, you can right-click and choose between them. So that way, you know, you can choose which one you want to hit back with. Tactically, very handy. Um, mm -hmm. Right-click to return to action menu. Actions. Uh, okay, so also there's a few new status ailments, but I pretty much mentioned them in relation to the items. There's burn. Uh, there are other things will cause burn, like the uh, Kaimani alchemist attack, uh, ranged attack. Uh, it's like damage over time, and then a little bit of uh, extra damage. It wears off by itself. Berserk is like attack bonus, and uh, exhausted is like a minus to everything, and you're not allowed to critical. Yeah. So I mean that's that's pretty much long and the short of it. I mean it's the the battle system in essence is is the same, but these upgrades have made it I think much more comprehensible and fun, uh, and that's important because you know I don't I want uh, the combat and freeholder to be like up to the quality of the other systems in it, and uh, you know I'm kind of a combat junkie. I like tactics. I've always liked tactical kind of games. So. Um, you know, I, I really am excited to keep making this better and keep making it more fun and more rewarding to play the combat section and to not make it feel like it's uh, some separate entity, but like weaves in properly. And there's we have some plans for the mid game to make it sort of like more uh, appealing in that way. Oh man, I love those Grey Wardens. All right, so uh, yeah, I got, I got new rewards and stuff set up. So you can see I got like a quiver and some broadhead arrows and some other things. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. Um, that's sort of the main thing that happened in Alpha 7. And uh, I hope you enjoyed checking out the battle system and thinking about the potential in the future, because, like, uh, each of those mercenaries, for example, they have, like, a set uh, equipment profile. But one thing I'm thinking about for the future, for example, is if uh, you sort of buy a lot of mercenaries, you raise your prestige at the mercenary guild, uh, you can get upgrades where the mercenaries will have like better equipment. You know, they'll start with like special use items or you know two weapons. Like a uh, the red blade might become like a red knight who has like increased armor and uh, two fights like dual blades or something. You know, so you know 
in line with the other aspects of Freeholder, which is that like the more you play with one particular style, the more the game tries to like allow you to upgrade that style and bring it uh, all the way through to the finish of the game. So it's like if you buy a lot of mercenaries, your mercenaries just sort of get cheaper and more powerful uh, because it's just the game getting harder means that these things have to grow to compensate. So, I mean, these are all sort of part of the thing, but I, I look forward to any feedback that you have. Uh, you know, uh, there's still like some visual tweaks and other things that need to happen. And there's a lot of other things that uh, just, you know, visual things for the game to make it more comprehensible, more easy to read, and just sort of get everything nice and bug free uh, before we start really uh, moving towards the, the end game and really getting the middle game like polished up and working like it should be. So uh, thanks everyone for your patience and thanks for checking out this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy checking out the new aspects of Freeholder uh, and I will talk to you next time.